Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Yunnan, which is a game for hard-boiled tea traders, which I'm sure you are, or else why would you be watching this film? So, let's go, my fellow tea traders. Now, I'm going to be doing a three-player run-through of this today, which is very unusual. Normally, I do two-player run-throughs. And in fact, well, actually, Yunnan proudly proclaims that it is a two to five player game. But in all honesty, I would beg to differ with that assessment. To me, the two player variant of this game, well, you know, uh, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. I'll talk about it a bit in the final thoughts, but suffice to say, I feel to actually properly demonstrate this game, I'm gonna be doing a three player run through, although it does go all the way up to five. And I think the more players you have, the more interesting it gets. But still, three players should give you a pretty good idea of how this game plays. And like I said, I'll talk about two player and my feelings of that in the final thoughts. Anyway, so today I will be the green player. And as the first player, I start with nine bucks. Jen will be the purple player. She also starts with nine bucks. That's a six, not a uh, nine bucks. And third player will be Tula, our beagle, who as the third player gets 12 bucks. And actually Tula, 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 hello, oh, yes, she says what? Why do you pester me so? But anyway, as you can see, she's a blonde beagle, so she will be the yellow player. Thanks to, okay, as you were. Alrighty, so, the game plays out, we are, as it says, tea traders. We are, uh, we are in the Yunnan province, where we make the greatest tea in all of China, and we want to ship it from our, our central market here in Puer, out to all the various provinces, out to Yunnan, out to Sichuan, and Gombo, and then ultimately out to Tibet, and even far away, uh, Ginghai. If you can imagine, so far. And the further we ship our tea, the more money we make. And money pretty much equals points in this game. So that's what it's all about. And every round of this game takes place in two halves. The first half of every round is an auction where we are using our traders, these little meeples, to basically bid for uh, the access of these different progress buildings that give us different advantages and abilities. And then for the second half of a round, any of our traders who did not engage in the, the, the bidding auction stuff, instead will get sent out into the world to make us money so that in the next round, we'll have more money to do more um, progress so we can be better and so on. So it's, it's a really straightforward, fairly streamlined game, but it, its core thing is this notion of, okay, I start the game with these three workers. Do I use them to get more abilities or do I skip on that and use them to make more money? And how do you balance that? And we're gonna be doing that today. So let's get going. For, for starters, like I said, I've got nine bucks and I'm gonna place my first bid in the auction. And by the way, there are one, two, three, four, five auctions going on in the game. This one is to get more traders. If you know whoever comes out on top here gets to get more workers, which of course is hugely valuable. This increases the number of borders you can cross. It's like a, I don't know, um, yeah, a, a, a border crossing agency or something like that. And you can see here at the beginning of the game, every player can cross two borders. And this is in the second half when we're traveling around and trying to sell our tea. Every player can cross two borders. But if you increase this, you can go up to three, four, five, six. You can go up to where you, in a single round you can cross up to six borders, which late in the game is very important. Also, you can see there's bonus points to be had. At the end of the game, if say uh, Jen had made it up here, in addition to at that point she can cross four borders, at the end of the game she'll score four bonus points. So there's an ancillary benefit for taking those. See, next up we've got the house, the horse riding house, where if whoever comes out on top there gets to move their little horse meeple. We've got these neat, oh, they keep falling over, drunken horses, these nice little horse meeples, and we can move them further out into the world. And what that represents is being able to travel further and further along the Great Tea Road, which is apparently a very famous Chinese road that was still in use up until the 1960s, uh, according to the rules. But anyway, so we can increase our range by using the horse building. The This progress building is influence with the emperor. You can see there's a chart for it. As we go higher and higher, we get more and more influence. And that has actually several benefits, which I'll talk about as I play along. And also, once again, the higher you go on this, you'll get one, four, nine, and then ultimately 16 points at the end of the game. And then the last one is the building house, where you might think this is an and or, but it's not. It's three different things. You can build um, trading posts, bridges, or tea houses. One of those three things. And so that are those are the five things we're bidding on. And it was well, there's also a bank we could go to to get some more money. I'll talk about that in a bit if, if it comes up. But let's see. So I'm going to place my first bid. And, you know, pff, how could you not want more workers? So I could come over here and make my bid of five. But you know what? This is an auction game. And you know how 
You don't always want to bid low as you can because then it makes it easy for somebody to outbid you. So I won't start at the bottom. I'll start one up at seven. And hopefully, because now somebody would have to go to nine to outbid me. And at the beginning of the game, we only have nine bucks. So um, hopefully I'll scare people away. But I don't. Jen immediately says, uh-uh. Boom. She goes straight to nine. And I have been outbid. So I'm off the table. Now, I should say, this is a, there's a very interesting twist to standard auctions here. The five and the seven space, which you can see are kind of in like these little, the smaller house. The five and the seven space, according to the rules, are quote, not safe. You can be outbid if you bid five or seven. But once you bid nine, 12, or 15, and this is true for all the houses, once you bid up to nine, you cannot be outbid anymore. So if, say, Tula comes along later and bids over here and goes up to 12, Jen will not be outbid. Both of them will be able to go. And so it's only if you, if you try to get in low at five or seven that you might get kicked out. And so really, if I wanted to guarantee I was going to get an extra worker, I should have started here at nine because I couldn't have been kicked out. And then nobody gets a five, seven. And in fact, the only other person who could afford, you know, because both Jen and I only have nine, Tula has 12. Tula would be the only one who could afford a, another worker. But I took a gamble. Jen outbid me, kicked me out. And now it is Tula's turn to make an opening bid. Hey, Tula. Let's see. Well, Tula is a beagle. Of course she likes horses. So let's say she comes over here and she tries to get in cheap on the extend your range house, progress house. So she bids five on that. All right, and now it's back to me, my second bid. And by the way, the bid order is always referenced right here. Me, Jen, and then Tula. You know, green, uh, purple, yellow. So I get another bid. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's see. Well, I'm gonna keep testing my luck. I'm gonna see if I can build a, a building on the cheap. I'm gonna come here for five. And hopefully nobody kicks me out. Okay, because I'm trying to get my money's worth out of it. Now, I would like to build a building if I can. Okay, now it's Jen's turn. Now, Jen has paid nine bucks. She has no more money. Because she started, oops, sorry, she started with six plus three. She started with nine bucks. So she could bid more if she wanted, but there is a huge price to pay for going into debt. Here we are at the first round of the game. You can see, and this keeps track of, you know, as the years pass, as we go through rounds. In the first round of the game, for every dollar you overspend in an auction, you lose eight points. And, you know, that could be debilitating. You know, maybe overspending by one or two is acceptable, you know, to lose eight or 16 points. But, you know, the lowest bit that anything, the lowest anything Jen could bid on would be another five. So, I mean, she would lose way, way, way too much. 40 bucks, 40 points to bid on something. She can't really afford to incur that kind of debt. It's crushing. You know, Martin Wallace, um, you know, uh, eat your heart out. This game's loans just completely can crush a player if you're not super careful. So I don't think Jen's going to bid anymore. So that means she's going to pass, which means she takes her other two workers and she puts them over here in the market of Puer. And what that means is these two guys are earmarked for the second half of the round to go out into the world and make Jen more money. Okay. So anyway, so that was Jen's second move and she's basically out of the bidding. All right, and now it's up to Tula again. And Tula says, oh, you know what? You, I'm, Tula wants to build a building as well, and so she's also gonna jump in. And once again, I've been kicked out. This is, my, this is uh, what I get for continually bidding so low. So now Tula, and you can see Tula has 12 bucks, so she can afford the seven plus five. And she's pretty much bone dry now as well. And so now it's back to me, and I've still yet to bid on anything successfully. And so what do I wanna do? Now, actually, so again, I've got nine bucks. I could kick Tula out, just like Jen did to me. But now I'm thinking actually something else is interesting. You know, I could come over here. And in fact, the nice thing is now that I know that neither Jen nor Tula have enough money to bid anymore, I could come here or here and guaranteed get these things for five. Alternatively, I could kick Tula out. But I got something else in mind. I'm gonna go to the bank. What that means is I come over here and you can see there's two spaces. The first player to go to the bank gets the nice space. The second player could get the bad space if you, if you wanted. But this means I'm going to make some extra income. And the amount of income I make is based on how much everybody spent. And I'll demonstrate that in a second. But one thing I will say, if, for example, actually, you know, I'm going to demonstrate it a little bit differently. I'm thinking, heck, you know what? Maybe I'm going to go, I'll, I'll bid on the emperor, right? And it's gonna cost me five bucks, fine. And, but, I'm, but I'm also gonna change my mind. This is another thing about this auction. You can change your mind. So I uh, bid on that. And now Jen, she's already passed. Tula says she has no more money. She doesn't want to incur debt. So she's gonna pass as well. So she's got one person to send out into the world. 
whereas I've got, or, you know, and then Jen's got two, and now it's my turn again. So I've still got four bucks, although I, you know, so I could come over here and I could incur one dollar's debt, um, or I could kick Tula out, and that means if I kick Tula out, even though she's already passed, she would unpass to try to I mean, start bidding again. Oh, by the way, I forgot. When Jen passed, she marked this as a marker. Uh, we always forget to do it. It doesn't really matter because it's obvious when you pass because everybody puts their stuff there, but you put these little things here to indicate you've passed. But anyway, so now it's my turn again. And you know what? I'm thinking about it more and I planned a little bit more and I decided, you know what? I'm gonna go to the bank. And what happens is when you go to the bank, you immediately, the only, if you go to the bank, that's the only thing you can do. So you have to immediately pull out of any auctions that you are already in and you have to send your other guys to the market in Puerto. Because the only thing, if you go to the bank, that's all you can do. It's a very important thing. And this can create some interesting situations. Like say, in a later in the game, you know, I had bid nine on this, and then Tula had bid 12. And then later on, I changed my mind, and I go to the bank, and then suddenly, the nine space is available. But it's too late for Tula. She's already bid 12. She can't get it for cheaper. So the, it's a really interesting twist. There's a couple of interesting twists on auctions. The fact that only the first two spaces can, you can get kicked out of and that you can change your mind and pull yourself out of an auction and kind of change the landscape for everybody. So anyway, sorry. Uh, so anyway, so Tula got this for five. Right, okay. So, and that means basically I have now passed as well because when you go to the bank, you're done. You can't do any other bids. So, as you can see, we are all done. And now this actually, I should say, not only is it a turnover track, it's also a play order reminder as well. So first thing, we were doing this auction stuff, and we're all done now. So that means now we move on to the bank. This is the icon for the bank, and anybody who went to the bank gets their payday. So let's come over here and look at me. Now I'm the only person who came to the bank, and I've got the high spot instead of the low spot. So that's quite nice. What does the high spot mean? Well. Uh, well, let me just demonstrate it. I, I remember I said before, the amount of money I'm gonna get from the bank depends on how much economic activity there was in the city. And so, we add it all up. There is seven plus nine, so that's 16, plus five uh, is 21. So, 21 won are about to be spent in town. You know, uh, really, just by Tula and Jen. I'm not spending any. 21 total won are going to be spent. And so we look up here on the um, victory point track and we climb along until we get up to 21 and we see there's 21 and um, what that means is if it had been anywhere from 19 to 23 bucks that had been spent in town, anybody who goes to the bank either gets nine bucks or six bucks depending on where they took the high space or low space. So the first person to go to the bank would get nine bucks. The second person to go to the bank would get six bucks. And so it's a really, really interesting thing. That's why you might have a situation where everybody ignores the bank, but then as more and more money is getting spent in these auctions, somebody says, wow, you know what? There's gonna be a lot of payout from the bank. And they pull themselves out, go to the bank, and then suddenly there's potentially a bunch of empty holes that you know somebody else might fill in the auction tracks. It's really, really neat, really, really clever. Now in this case, you know, I, I pulled, it didn't really matter because there's only a three-player game and it's early. You know, later on we'll have more workers, more stuff will be going on. But suffice to say, we are on the bank stage, so we calculate how much money, and then I get it. So I just made nine more won. So I haven't spent anything, and I am now the richest man in Yunnan. Woohoo! Okay, so we finished the bank. Then we move on to actually paying, you know, an actual payout for all these. Yeah, yeah, for, for, for all of these uh, auctions we engaged in. So let's go through it. And you actually are supposed to go in turn order. So first of all, any auctions that I had been in, I would resolve, but I wasn't in any. So now Jen is the second player, so we resolve hers. She only came out in one. It was this thing over here. So she now has to spend nine bucks, which is all of her money. And she has gotten herself an extra worker, and this worker immediately goes. So you can see Jen actually has three traders who will be able to who will be sent out into the world. Right, so that was all of Jen's because again the game, the game, it's the game starts off slow, but it picks up pretty quick. And now we get to Tula. So we resolve Tula. And so first of all, she owes five bucks for this horse. So here's a six, get one change. And she takes her horse from Yunnan and moves over here to Sichuan as a reminder that Tula, everybody else is limited to Yunnan. This is as far as we can go, but Tula can get out here to Sichuan. All right. Oh, and we're supposed to take our workers, but ah, we never do. We just always leave them and clean them up at the end. All right, and then the next thing Tula did, she tried to build a building, and that cost her seven, and this is the last of her money. She has no more cash, and now she can build a trading house 
a, what do you call it, a bridge or a tea house. And those are all good options. Let's see. Now, here's the thing. Here's the way a bridge works. The bridge allows you to create shortcuts. See, normally, when you're con con considering distance to travel, you have to follow the main road. So if you wanted to move traders all the way over here to Gombo, it would mean, starting here, you would cross one border, two border, three borders to follow the main road. And remember, at the beginning of the game, we can only travel two borders. But if somebody had built a bridge here, then they can cross one border, two borders. So it's really nice. If you build a bridge over here, you could go one, two, and that's a shortcut which lets you skip two whole provinces. So bridges are really, really awesome. But the problem is you can't build a bridge until your horse, you, you know, Tula could not build a bridge here until she had advanced her horse two more times. Because that means she now has access to Tibet, and so she could build the shortcut for later usage. So since Tula only advanced her horse once, because that's as far as you can go, you can only get one result out of this. You know, Tula could not have put like and tried to build a second thing, or Jen could not have tried to get a second builder. So she's not gonna build a bridge. So that leaves her with either a tea house or a trading house. And they both are very, very different. Let's talk about the tea house first. Now, every region has a space for one tea house and only one. So if, if Tula, can build her tea house here, or instantly she could build it here because she has access to both of these regions. And if you do that, Tula will earn 12 points at the end of the game, 12 victory points, it's awesome. Plus the tea house protects you from the inspector. This guy is a dick. He's kind of like the provost in Kalis. He makes everybody's life miserable and having protection from him is a big deal. So if Jen builds a, t or, I'm sorry, if Tula builds a tea house here, it would protect her from the, um, what do you call it, the inspector. Plus she will also score 12 points at the end of the game. And that's it, that's all it does. Once it's built, it can never be moved. Now I think Tula's gonna be thinking a little bit more long-term. She's gonna build a trading house in, in um, what is it, in Yunnan. Now because she's built a trading house in this region, this trading house, every turn for the rest of the game is gonna earn her one dollar. At the end of the round, it'll earn her one yuan. So basically, she built this trading house for free. She had to spend seven to build it, but over the course of the game, it will return income of seven, so it'll have paid for itself by the end. But it does something else very important too, which is it helps her extend her trading chain. But I'll talk about that in the second half when we start to explore the uh, you know the, the actual outer world. Okay, so that'll come up in the second half. So Tula spent seven bucks to build a trading house. And again, now she could have built it here or here. She could have built it in either region. And unlike tea houses, there's no, everybody could get a trading house built. There's no, um, you know, first come, first serve. Tula's going to build it in this region, though. Interestingly, if she built it in this region, it would earn her three bucks every turn for the rest of the game. So this might earn her up to 21 points. But I think she's going to do it down here, and there's a good reason for it, and you'll see that in the second half when we start exploring. Okay, so we have now finished resolving the auction houses, the one, two, three, four, five auction houses. You know, Jen got an extra worker, Tula got a horse, which extended her reach, and she built a trading post here. Right, and I didn't build anything, I got my money out of the bank. So everybody else is totally broke, and I am swimming in dough. So that'll be nice for the next year's auctions. I can afford to drive prices up, etc., etc. Okay, so now, we finished that, and now we move over to the second half of the round. And you, you can see we literally move our markers over. Boop, boop, boop. And now turn order is reversed. In the auction phase, I was the first player and Tula was the last. Now in the travel phase, Tula is the first player and I'm the last. So it always makes that swap halfway through. So we are now going to do it, and Tula is the first um, trader who gets to travel. Now, during your travels, like I remember I said, all of us can only spend up to two, or I'm sorry, we have two boarding crossings we can spend. Now, Tula only has one trader who can go out there into the world. And so Tula can spend two um, border crossings, and so she'll cross the first border in, you know, from Puer into Yunnan, and then she will cross the second border from Yunnan into Sichuan over here, and only she, Tula is the only player who can come here because she advanced her horse. Nobody else can move into this yet because no one else has advanced their horse technology or you know bought the horses or basically you know no one has the range. So now that was it. Tula is done, and at the end of your turn, 
After you have expanded, after you've moved stuff around, you have to do a check. You have to confirm that you successfully have an unbroken chain, a, a trading chain from where the farthest you've been all the way back to Puer Market. And if you don't, then you lose all that progress you made. Now, Tula's, this is why she put her trading house here, because this is the first step of her chain, and this allows her to have her trader out here in the second step of the chain. If, say, to, you know, like, you know so Tula, th that's why Tula put this here, so she can have an unbroken chain. Now, me, I've got, say, I've got two border crossings. I could go boom, and say I did have a horse out here. I could come out here if my horse was over here, but then the problem is, I don't have anybody in my in this first space. So there's a break in my chain. And if that happens, everybody past the break gets sent all the way back home. So it's really important as you're doing your long-term planning, as you spread out you know, from Yunnan all the way out to Tibet and, uh, and uh, King, or King High, or however you pronounce it, that you have to keep that, that chain built. And so that's why Tula took the lower income for her trading house so that she could get the higher income by having her trader. Because you can see the trading house would have made three, but her trader out here makes nine. So between the two, she's going to make nine, ten. If she'd gone the other way and had a trader here and the house there, she would make three plus um, six is nine. So she'd make the same amount of money, but... Because she's all the way out here by herself, there are additional benefits that she's gonna get when we get over here to the presence phase. And Tula loves presents, she loves treats, that's why she came out here. So that's why, you know, it would've been the same to have this out here and this out here, but Tula wanted to get the present. Okay, so anyway, so she is done. She's used her two border movements to go one, two, and then she did a spot check. Does she have an unbroken chain all the way back to where? Yes, she does, so we're done with her. Now we move on to Jen. Jen has two movement or two borders, but she's got three dudes to move. And so what she's going to do is she's going to spend one of her two movement to move the first guy into Yunnan and the second to move the second guy into Yunnan. And now this last guy, she has no more border crossing, so he'll just stay home. And so these two guys, each of them will earn her six bucks. And this guy who stayed home will earn her three bucks. All right. And now, Jen also has to make a check. Does she have an unbroken chain? Yes, she does. From Yunnan back to, yep, she's fine. And so she's, and now me, I've got two dudes, and I've also got two movements, so I'll do the same thing as Jen. I'll move my two guys from Puer over to Yunnan. And so now, as you can see, there are four traders in this region who are all gonna be making income. Um, Tula's gonna make a little bit of income off her house, and then Tula's out here all by herself in Sichuan. Okay. We are finished. We have done the, the movement phase. Now the inspector comes, and we hate this guy. Now, he's going to come out here, and he's going to cause trouble for us. He is drawn to whichever region is going to generate the most income. So if we look up here, this region is going to generate nine income, because there's one trader, and every trader, it doesn't matter how, you know, it's spread amongst all players. There's only one trader, so nine bucks is going to be made in this region. In this region, there are one, two, three, four traders so that's 24 income plus this house. There are there's 25 yuan, or yuan, or however you pronounce it, of income in Yunnan. So the inspector is going to come here, and so Tula is very happy about that because Tula is going to be is going not, not going to be molested by the inspector because she's up here all by herself. If she were down here, remember, if she'd done the reverse, then she would have to face the wrath of the inspector also, and she'd be kind of screwed. But now since she is up here unmolested. She makes less money. She'll make less money off of this for the rest of the game, but she won't be pestered by the inspector. All right. So the inspector has now deployed himself, and what he's going to do is, and this happens every round, one trader is going to be sent all the way back to Puer. And now, at the beginning of the game, it's not that bad. We're only going back one region. But, you know, later in the game, when it's up in Tibet, and, the t and you've got somebody all the way up here, and then the inspector shows up and sends him all the way back, that can be heartbreaking. That can just be devastating. I mean, you can go from earning 15 bucks to three. So the inspector is really dangerous. You know, so don't be fooled. In the first round, it's not that big a deal. But in later rounds, you, you have to really bear in mind what's going to happen. Where am I going to move? Where is everybody else going to move? What area is going to make the most money? And will I be protected? Because that's where the tea house comes in. If, the, you know, the, if I had built a tea house in this region, when the inspector came here, I would be safe because I could bribe him with some tea. And then only Jen would be in danger. But since nobody built the tea house, everybody's potentially in danger. Okay, so 
the inspector has moved, and now he's going to kick somebody out. And the way he does it is, he is a cruel, vindictive, petty man, this inspector. And so the, the person he will target is the person who has the most influence. So if anybody had actually increased on the influence track, you know, so if I had increased, he would come for me, and he would kick one of my guys out. And you know, if, if, if uh, same token, if I were up at two and general at one, again, he would come for me. Now, if we were tied, and that's the case, we're both tied at no influence, so we ignore influence, then he is going to base it based on who has been here the longest. And that's where the turn order track comes in. So as you can see, Tula is not in, in the running, she doesn't care, so Jen is next. So that means Jen has been here making money for longer, and so Jen the, gets hit by the inspector and has to send one of her workers all the way back to Puer. Okay, and that's it. Now, I, I, I probably droned on about that a little bit too much, but I really wanted to, I mean, the inspector is a huge component of this game, and you can kind of somewhat predict where he's going to be, but you can never be sure, because you never can be exactly sure what's gonna, what province is going to make the most money. You can anticipate what you think your opponents are going to do. You can protect yourself, but you can never be quite sure. But anyway, that's the thing. Again, if Tula had been down here, and she'd, you know, she'd built up here so that you know, she'd make more money and all of that, then... Um, what would have happened is, hey, we're all equal, and we were all the same influence. Who would the inspector go for? Tula, because Tula had been there the longest. And so that's why Tula did the swap, so that she was safe. She is a good dog. She is a smart beagle. Actually, she's not, but that's okay. All right, so anyway, so the inspector has come, has kicked Jen out, and really, the net result of that is, that guy was going to make six bucks, but now he's only going to make three instead. So like I said, at the beginning, it's not that bad, but later on, it'll be worse. So we're done with the inspector. Now, oopsie. Now we move on to presents. Now there are no presents to be had. You know, uh, the traders have been here for a long time. There are no presents. But Tula is the only person, the only trader up here in Sichuan, so she gets a present. It's worth three points at the end of the game, and that's a big deal. Presents can make a big deal. Also, the game is over when all the presents have been picked up out of all the uh, all, all reasons. Well, there's two ways it could end. It could end when all the presents are gone, or when somebody scores 80 points. And it really could go either way. But anyway, so Tula has gotten a bonus three points for getting the first present. And she's set up to get additional presents as long as she stays out here. Because her tra all our traders can stay out there as long as they want. The only thing that we can move them around or they might get kicked out, etc., etc. So anyway, though, so that was the presents. Now we figure out how much money everybody is going to make. And so this has an impact. Now Tula is going to make 9 for this trader plus 1 for this house. Tula is going to make 10 points. So we take her little marker. Or not, not 10 points, 10 bucks. And we put it here to indicate, as a reminder, that she is making $10. Her income is 10. Now let's figure me out. I've got two guys here. So that's six, uh, six plus six, 12. My income is 12 points. And Jen, she got the short end of the stick big time. She's getting six for this guy. Um, yeah, but then these two guys are still here. They, so she's making 12 also. And in fact, actually, we, we have to figure these out. And so Tula was figured, then Jen was figured, and then I was figured. And so you can see Jen and I made the same amount of money, and Tula made a little bit less. But she got the first present, and she is out further than anybody else. Okay, and so now, the reason we do this is because we now have to redetermine player order for the next turn. Whoever makes the most money um, becomes the first player for next turn. And now, in this case, Tula made the least money, so she's going to get bounced down, and Jen and I will get bounced up because we tied. And so you can see, the turn order for next round has changed. Since Tula made less money, you know, the turn order changed. All right, then, now finally, at the end of the year, we can get our income. So Jen and I get 12 bucks, Tula gets 10 bucks. And we can just take the money straight up, or one for one, we can take victory points instead. And during the game, this is the only way we can create victory points. The, this present doesn't score till the end. These don't score till the end of the game. The, the tea houses don't score till the end of the game. So um, to get up to 80 points, we have to earmark a certain amount of our income towards victory points. And let's see, and it's, uh, everybody figures it out. I think Jen, who has no money, she's just gonna take all 12 bucks. Now me, I've got a lot of money because I went to the bank. So I think I will take, I'll only take six of my 12 bucks since I've got so much money already. And that means my other six, I just scored six points. I'm the first player on the board. Okay, and then uh, Tula, she also has no money. She's gonna take, is she gonna take all 10? Hmm. No, I think she'll take nine, or yeah, nine. And then she will um, take one point, one victory point. There we go. And so Jen scored nothing. She's got 12 bucks. And 
Now we reset and so you can see Tula is going to be the first to bid and then me and then Jen. And we start on the second year. And now you can see debt gets a little bit less. It's still crushing, but a little bit less crushing. And there you go. That was one round of Yunnan. Now the game generally goes for six or seven rounds. You know, maybe as little as five, if, if, depending on how things go, depending on how things, fast things escalate. Because in this game, things escalate quick. And if you would like to watch another round and see some of that escalation and see the stuff you didn't see, like you didn't see influence, which is a huge deal. You didn't see increasing this. Um, you know, nobody went, oh, oh, by the way, everybody gets their workers back. I forgot about that. So I take my worker back. Uh, Jen takes her worker back. Uh, Tula takes her two workers back. And uh, these two on the market go back. So that's another interesting thing. I, 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 I have two workers out here in the world, which means I've only got one bid I can make. Whereas Jen's got three and Tula's got two. Now if I want, when I'm making bids, I can pull my guys back. It's a one-time thing. I could pull them back and have another bidder, but then that's six bucks less. I already had to spend some time to move this guy up. So do I bring them back or do I leave them out there to make more money and only go with one bid this turn? Well, I've got a lot of money, so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, if you'd like to watch that, you can hit the button that's on screen right now for extended play, or alternatively, you can hit the other button and go to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.